Thanking you all uh, for coming out and participating with us and making this year uh, a, a bigger and better step towards our goal 2015 of uh, the 50th anniversary of the city. Lots of international attention, national attention, and we're going to show them what the Seminole War was all about. And we've been building up gradually over the years. And our sights then are set on 2015, so I certainly want to hope that most, if not every one of us, will be back here as this grows further on. And we'll have remarks in just a minute from two organizations that have joined our ranks. Uh, but first, before we do that, uh, I mentioned the reenactors briefly uh, outside. We said we'd go in a little more detail when we get back where it's cool. So first... The uh, Peace River Artillery under Gary Fisher, Colonel Gary Fisher, and if he could have his folks introduce his folks, and uh, they were the ones that were firing off the shots and so forth. <laughs> you want to say any words? Well, we all love history here, and uh, us as reenactors, we get out there in the field and have the uniforms on, and we get a greater appreciation of just how tough it was for our soldiers back then. And just the little bit of time that we are on a field, this gives us more appreci appreciation, like I said, for what they've done and what they had to go through. Well, so, thanks glad a to get back in any way we possibly can. Thanks a lot. I, I don't know how much detail was conveyed about the actual piece they were firing. But uh, these folks did a yeoman job because that particular cannon that they were firing is an exact replica of the one that accompanied Dade's command when it was ambushed. There's a little bit of a story about what happened to it, but we're pretty sure uh, it was thrown into a swamp by the Indians, by the Seminoles, after the battle. It may have been exhumed. In any event, there historic historian experts all around this room that could go into great detail about the ins and outs of where that cannon is. <coughs> the bottom line, we haven't found it, but there's an but that's an exact replica of it and it's usually on display at the museum dedicated to Dade's battle down there in Dade City. Bushman. It will be after we clean it up and get it back in there. And, and they dismantled it, took it out of the museum, brought it back up here, fired it for us, um, so we could get a sense of, of what all that was about. So thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Yeah, and then there was a Company B of the 3rd Artillery, uh, not to be confused with the Peace River Artillery, but Company B with the 3rd Artillery with uh, Dennis Marshall. And you... Uh, were the reenactors and the color guard and so forth at Dennis, your, your folks. I really thought they were pretty sharp, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, you know, uh, we were struggling to be quite that sharp when I was in the ranks in 1956. <laughs> um, and, and they're doing pretty doggone well. I appreciate it. Very good. And Jerry, uh, Mars, and, and Linda uh, uh, were, uh, yeah, there you are, uh, displaying. Mike Linda, too, don't you? Yeah. Hey, Jerry. If it wasn't for Linda, I wouldn't be able to be here. She does all the work of putting the work in and doing all that stuff. It's her that gets me here. I thought she baked the hard time. She, she does, does that? I make the heart attack. Well, you make the heart attack. Well, that was really fascinating, and it all went in our appetite for the field rations we're having now. We're going to be doing another class at this. If anybody hasn't seen it, come over and look at it. Where was it? Where is it? Right out in the front. Oh, you're going to uh, going to give? Oh, yeah, great, good idea. 
So if you want to, and you didn't get your fill here, go on over there. And I, when I walked by, you were pouring out some vitamin stuff. <laughs> they, the heart attack didn't give them the vitamins. What was that? Some, 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 some honey to go with the heart attack. Oh, honey. Okay. I don't have any spirits. Well, um, and then uh, there are two folks here. Uh, we're honored to have their presence. Uh, Mayor Emeritus George Gardner, who has been here, I think, every year. Five years. Five yeah. years in a row. <laughs> and he puts, out, he puts out one of the best columns on St. Augustine. You don't have to subscribe to the record. I know a lot of you folks are up from Dade City and so forth. You can just subscribe to it even if you want it. But he has a, a web, he puts out over the internet, uh, the St. Augustine Journal? Report. Report. And it's really great. It's weekly. And uh, what's the website? It's uh, not a website. It's, it's not a website. They've emailed it. Subscribe gardener at aug.com. Gardener at aug.com. And you can get on the subscription. And so if you're in Dade City, you can keep track of what's going on here. Um, and I think that might be helpful. So thanks for your loyal support. And then we have Bill Dudley here, who is chairman of uh, the St. John's County Veterans Council. He represents all the veterans of St. John's County. Navy, Navy, and big job. And thanks uh, for your support, Bill. My pleasure. And finally, uh, kind of in the way of introductions, we were fortunate enough to catch uh, Tommy Thompson, class of 43, going out as the oldest grad. Guess who the youngest grad would be? You. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've already heard from her, but you can hear from her again. This is uh, Major uh, Betsy Evans, is the class of 2000. She's the youngest grad here. Tradition, she has to say a few words. Okay, um, it's been a long time since I've been to a West Point event where I've been the youngest grad. I graduated 12 years ago. Uh, so normally it's a lieutenant thing that's up and tells you how much everything has changed at West Point since the old grads were there. Um, and there's been a lot that's changed since I graduated. Uh, they now have iPads and cell phones. And they don't have to ping around. And, you know, the core is going to heck. So. <laughs> Point. It was the 20th uh, graduating class of women. So in my class, we graduated with 87 women. Uh, we just had our 10-year reunion two years ago. It was great. About 400 of us were able to attend. Uh, about, I'd say about 30% of my class is still in the, in the military. About 70% are not. Uh, we have a good group. Uh, I was fortunate enough to come into the National Guard on an assignment. 80% uh, of the force uh, of engineers is in the National Guard and Reserve, and then I'll be transitioning back to active duty next month. The, uh, the academy is in great shape for those of you that have had the opportunity recently to get back up there. In 2002, they celebrated the bicentennial, and with that came some major construction. We have one more introduction that uh, I, I wanted to make. Uh, Colonel Dodd is here. He's class of 89. He just came on board in Jacksonville, uh, commanding the District Corps of Engineers there. So. Uh, he comes uh, from an assignment previous to this. He's been overseas uh, multiple times. Uh, he's definitely a, a great uh, person to have here as an engineer and also as a leader um, in the Jacksonville area. So, Colonel Dunn, thank you for coming. Joe, I turn it back to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Colonel Dodd, by the way, is responsible. What a you know, continuity an engineer, West Point grad, responsible for repairing the seawalls which the West Point grads built. Who? Uh, well, the other thing that Betsy Betsy uh, didn't mention is uh, we picked her to be our the new uh, head of our arm uh, for the. Uh, our society, the West Point Society, we have an annual Army-Navy golf tournament uh, the Friday before Army-Navy Day. And Navy has beaten us uh, up until the last two times, every time. So we picked Betsy, who is an ace golfer, 
to, to lead our contention. Hopefully she can make it back from Washington. You'll say some words about the uh, Seminole Wars Foundation, and then we'll talk a little bit about the 450th uh, Military Commemoration Committee. So I've introduced Frank before, outside, um, and uh, most of us would like to know a little of the background of, of uh, the Seminole Wars Foundation, what you do, Frank. War with the Seminole Indians for 11 years. Thousands of soldiers, thousands of Seminoles died. These people, white, red, and black, have been forgotten or ignored. The goal of the Seminole Wars Foundation is to bring them back. Let them tell their stories. Let us tell us why they fought, why they died. We invite you to join us in this endeavor. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to turn to Colonel Ron Radford, who is uh, the, uh, the organizing genius behind uh, something called the 450th Military Commemoration Committee. Uh, so the 450th and commemoration fits with the 450th of St. Augustine Commemoration Committee. And Ron, I'll tell you how this committee fits in uh, to the big picture. I'll make it short, uh, even though my wife always says, you talk too long. I was gone for 40 years, but this is my hometown. And I think George, the former mayor, has heard me say this. But I attended, about a year and a half ago, the city put on a number of programs about you know the history of the city and the cultures that leading up to the 450th. And I'm a member of the Military Officers Association here in town. And I brought it back to our board. I was a past president, so I was on the board. And I said, they're forgetting about the military. I said, what would have had to have, it's known as the oldest city because it's the oldest continuously settled city. What would have had to have been here for all those years for it to survive? It had to be some kind of military force. But they were, there was no plans in specifics, so the president at that time says, well, we're supposed to be leaders, well, we'll do something. And I got elected chairman since I've been. <laughs> but there are a number of super people like uh, Joe are on the committee and Harry Metz, who you saw in his brilliant white uniform back there. The, uh, so a number of uh, key people, but we need lots more help. But we've got a strategic plan that's been written and uh, Joe, uh, I mentioned to Joe, his continuity theme is really brilliant, that what we're talking about, our vision statement, and I'll, in case I leave out a word, is to establish St. Augustine as the premier destination for learning about the vital role. I, argue, I questioned myself many months about what was the role of the military, how do you describe it, and I finally, con significant, major, outstanding, I concluded that vital was the right way, description of the military role. Uh, vital role of the military is demonstrated, not, not just somebody brought it up and thought it up, as demonstrated by 450 years of continuous protection of our city, state, and nation. Uh, I've met with General Titshaw back last year to discuss our plans, and he says, I'm all in. He must play uh, holding poker. Uh, but one of the, we've, uh, Joe helped me put a presentation, which we've given several times, starts with the first militia and the fort that says that we were protecting the city back then and some people don't know this and i'll have to brag about the air force even though you bunch of your army people are around here <laughs> the uh f-15s fly out of the jacksonville airport today flying air defense of the southeast so we've got in our presentation inner and outer defenses with the walls that you hear that some of you historians know about, the inner walls, and then of course the outer walls. I was talking to a gentleman here about, he's an expert on forts in Florida. That was the outer defenses, Fort Piccolata, Fort Matanzas, Fort Mose, and you go on and on. Today our, our, our air guard as well as our active forces are flying air defense here locally. That's our inner defenses, our carriers and forward bases or our outer defenses today. So this program is one of the ones that we fully are behind, and Joe's obviously a prime mover. 
we handle Memorial Day, our chapter does, and Veterans Day. We're working on other programs that, and documentaries and those kind of things that we'll be uh, plan that we're planning and implementing. We started last year with our Veterans Day. Our chapter is responsible for that, along with the guard. That we had a four-man musket team and a four-man guard team providing the rifle salutes to, to show the continuity from the beginning until today. So that's what our committee is all about. And this program, which Joe's done a super job. I think, where's Greg? Did I see Greg? Well, I'm we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Well, I was just going to mention that I was president of, our, of MOA at that time, and I had an invitation, and it was either the first or second time because Greg gave our ceremony was over there at the pyramids, and he gave, as usual, his brilliant description <laughs> of the history. <laughs> so it's growing, and that's great, and so we want to make sure that our committee recognizes all the military activities and efforts that are going on and are still going on today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Thank you all for being a part of this. And uh, just remember, we do this, though. The most important part of the day was our solemn remembrance at the cemetery. That's the purpose. So keep those people in your mind, uh, and have a great day. No, no final comments uh, except that put your calendar first Saturday after the 15th of August. That 15th of August, 1842, is when that parade happens. We do it on a Saturday, as you can appreciate, the Saturday after the 15th, a little bit later in the month. So go back home, put that X in your calendar, and we'll see you next year. All right. Thank you all for coming. Thank <laughs> you.